I grew up with a lot of legendary photographers. Trox is here. He's, you know, it's it's really cool. I don't know why I grew up with so many photographers. It's kind of mm. weird to think about it. Some of my best yeah. friends are photographers, you know? It was interesting because, like, they would all shoot me as kids, like, coming up. Yeah. But I remember uh, when I would shoot with different photographers, I would actually tell them how to do it. It's like, right. no, like, get this, get this yeah, angle. Yeah. And I do my little trick. I always say, don't make me look fat, like, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Like, yeah, but it was cool. But then after a while, um, just randomly, I was doing a fashion show, and this uh, designer, he uh, double booked um, a photographer. Yeah. And then from there, um, the uh, photographer chose to go to the other job, and the job paid six grand. Yeah. And I said, I got it. I'm a photographer. <laughs> I yeah. Didn't own a camera. No. Didn't own anything. Oh, really? Oh, dude, I knew nothing just about Just jumped into it. I'm like, come on, you look through the hole, you press the button. You know, that's all. How'd that work for you? I got six grand. <laughs> <laughs> How'd the photos come up? Perfect, because when you do a big shoot, yeah. your assistant does everything. Oh. I just went, just like I said. Yeah. But until I had to learn it. Right. <laughs> and you learned with film. Learn with film. Obviously. Film was amazing. Yeah. Um, so when was that? When was that? When's the first time you picked up a camera? When was that? Well, the first, well, like the first time I picked up a camera, like I guess was when I was a little kid. You know, when you're, you're going yeah, yeah. to the zoo, you know, things like that. You ever have a 110? No. Oh, wait, wait, the little thin one. Yeah. Of course, of course, <laughs> with, the, with the cube. Yeah. With the cube flash, yeah, yeah definitely. And um, Kodak drive-through. Little. The little yeah. thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I remember our parents going there and it would take at least like a week. And you skated. You were uh, a pretty man. Yeah, like I've been skating since <laughs> <laughs> since um, seventy five. So I looked. We Long tried to time. we tried to blow up the the magazine, uh, the cover magazine. You yeah, know? yeah, Thrasher. Yeah, I couldn't get it, but like I was trying to blow it up before you got here. Oh uh, like, no way! That yeah, would have been so yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Whoa, that would have been killer. Yeah. I'm gonna just talk about some stuff that struck me that you've done. Mm. Uh, Cuba. Cuba, amazing beyond like skateboarding the in the prison. Top. Right, that's one of the top I've ever done. Talk about this. Okay, um, for years, years and years and years, um, I wanted to shoot inside of a prison because they have some of the best like tattoo work right. inside the prison. So I said, well, how do I do it? So I just said, let me just contact the prison. For four years, no, denied, 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 denied. So then I was like, you kept, Man, how you can kept I? hitting them. Oh, constantly, like I never stopped. Like I bug you, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> but I um, basically hit up uh, the prison, and they said no. So then I hit up Dennis Martinez because he's because he speaks inside of like the prisons. He's like a old school pro skater from San Diego. He made it happen. Yeah. And, and uh, the next thing I know, I'm up in Blythe here. Yeah. And um, uh, because and because he was a pro skater, and because I skate and everything and all that we were allowed to bring skateboards in. So Dennis made it happen, like, yeah. big time. And I just said, this has never been seen before. This right. has never been documented before. Well, dude, and I mean, skating in prison, like, they must have been going nuts, those too. Are, those are weapons, like I, like yeah, I would yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, of course. But Well, anything in prison is a weapon. They became kids. Yeah. Like, they lined up yeah. to ride on a board. And, like, there's so many images I have of other inmates that were riding that. So what was it like once you were in there? Well, for me, it was, it just ba basically made me look at them different. Yeah. Because, of course, like, we think prison, you know, bad guys. Yeah. They're some of the most together people I've ever met. I know mm. it sounds weird. I know it sounds weird, but together in a way where mm. they have a sense of life, what we don't get. Like, he's a very we, bad guy. He's been in prison his whole life. Yeah. Like, he's a nice guy. He's a, he's a teddy bear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, until we're, like, 80 or something. Because these guys had life. Yeah. So they have that look in their eyes of like, but you know what is, uh, it's, I don't it's, need anything, money, nothing, just life. The, and to you know what? That. And, and they're, they're taking advantage of life and living it to their fullest, right? And, yeah. you know, we all have um, past, we all, whatever. But, yeah, yeah some of, some of the, the biggest monsters in the world, I'm going to mention names, to me are teddy bears. They hug me, they kiss me. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I love them. But it's like, they're scary motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. But I guess, sure. you know, if you're... I don't know, man. It's it just was a weird surreal thing. experience, though. It made me change my whole direction of how my shoot was going to go, because now I see them as human. 
Well, everyone's human. Like, yeah, but I was saying, oh, here's some thugs. I'm about to, you know, right, right. blah, blah, blah. You know, I got to act a certain way, but yeah, I yeah. didn't, you know. It was dope. 